Hey everyone, it's Sean. In today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through how to use the Live Paint Bucket tool in Illustrator. Uh, it's a really cool tool if you know how to work it into your workflow. It's one of those tools that if you weren't really aware it's there, you might not have used it and you might have gone through a different workflow in order to achieve the same results. But it's a great tool, can save you some time if you know how to use it. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to make a document that is 1920 by 1080 uh, pixels and I'm just going to set it to landscape orientation and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create that. Cool. So now that we have our file, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, use our ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw out a few uh, ellipses. Um, I'm going to uh, so draw out one and then switch over to my move tool V on your keyboard and hold alt option and click and drag so that I have another ellipse and then um, I'm going to use command D to duplicate uh, and duplicate out a third ellipse so I know we can't technically see them but there we go I have three interact or intersecting ellipses and uh, we're gonna go ahead and look at our live paint tool um, so if you guys want to to make this the most effective make sure you have your swatches window panel open if it's not on your sidebar here you can just go to window uh, and then uh, swatches all the way down here and it'll open it up for you so pressing K on your keyboard um, or coming over to the left hand uh, control panel you can see we have our live paint bucket it's right here and we have a few different things underneath here live paint bucket being one of them and live paint selection being another so with your live paint bucket selected you get this uh, interesting sort of um, set of icons above your paint bucket right you have the no stroke or no fill white and black and if we use the keys on our keyboard um, the left and right keys you can see that we can actually toggle through all of our color swatches and if you look up at your swatches panel you can see you're actively switching through these swatches um, using your arrow keys you can go up and down um, up will or if you go down rather it'll switch you into a different color group so if you're highly organized and you like to use color groups this is a fast way to switch between them um, or you can just use left and right and you can uh, you know maneuver through all of your different color swatches so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, maneuver over to my red color swatch and uh, in case you didn't have your ellipses selected, you need to make sure you have the objects that you'd wish to color selected uh, when you open up the live paint tool, just as a heads up. So I'm gonna switch over to my red color, uh, color swatch and I'm going to paint in the inside of my first circle here. Uh, you'll see that it left the intersection empty, that's fine. I'm going to switch over to my yellow color swatch and I'm going to color in the next middle part of the second ellipse and then I'm going to switch over to green and do the same thing for the exterior. Um, so now we can actually just kind of look at coloring in the insides with the teal and the blue. And there you go, you have sort of this really cool intersecting set of shapes. Um, and the interesting thing about the Live Paint Bucket tool versus just the Fill tool, uh, and I'll show you down here really quick. I'm gonna switch this back over to white. And I'm just gonna draw out two more ellipses, like so, great, and select them, wonderful. So the difference between just filling this with blue or with any color and using the live paint bucket is once you fill these two shapes um you'll notice that the intersection uh it just it doesn't act in the same way that the live paint bucket tool does and the reason for that is because when we're using the live paint bucket tool illustrator is doing the math and it is understanding where paths are intersecting and creating new shapes um, that's really crucial because if you're working on super complex illustration work or something uh, this could be a great shortcut for you to go and use um, as opposed to having to use uh, uh, techniques like Pathfinder. So I'm just going to quickly open up Pathfinder and sort of show you what I mean. So I just used the divide option and now I can actually go in and change the interior section. So using Live Paint, 
um, we had we were able to skip a step and still come out with the same results, which is great. Now, the only thing with live paint is when you start creating live painted shapes, um, they do become a complex path or a compound shape, uh, and it's not easy to tear these things apart. Um, so to be able to actually go and manipulate just individual aspects of it, you do have to use your direct selection tool, and even then you can see that it's actually messing around with the interior of this whole thing. Um, so what we can another thing that we can take a look at actually is using the live paint selection tool uh, which is just underneath the live paint tool on your toolbar here it's uh, shift L on your keyboard and the cool thing about the live selection tool is it lets you select multiple um, multiple areas and change their color all at once so if we select everything all of a sudden we're left with uh, three green ellipses shapes um, or you know you could also just select the interior oops the interior shapes and change them to something different like um, maybe like a dark green and now we're left with this kind of ugly color combination but it works um, so the live paint uh, bucket can be really cool for coloring complex artwork, um, but sometimes uh, if you're drawing stuff and you're not super precise, um, I'm just going to find my pencil tool here for a second. There it is. So pencil tool is N on your keyboard. And what I want to do is uh, I'm going to turn this off. I'm just going to set it to no fill and no stroke. And I'm going to try and draw the best circle I humanly can. So there we go. We have a circle. It closed the path. Um, and I'm going to draw another circle. And I'm going to try and leave the path open this time. Actually, we're going to try and intersect it a little differently. Hmm. OK, cool. So. Here we have two shapes, right? The first one is closed, so it's not going to cause as much of an issue. I can color that guy in. But this one, this isn't going to let us color it in. It's not a closed path. And so to deal with that, uh, we can actually go um, into our live paint bucket options. So to fix the fact that this isn't a live paint, Op uh, a live painted shape because it's sort of open. Um, what we're going to have to do, I thought it was under um, live paint bucket options. It was my mistake. Uh, we're going to go to object, live paint, and then gap options. And gap options is basically going to determine how Illustrator handles this gap here. Um, and so if you don't have gap detection turned on, make sure it's turned on. And what we can do is we can set this to large gaps. Uh, you could also set it to custom gaps or medium, but we're just going to work with large for now. Uh, and we can go ahead and hit OK. And now we should be able to oh, still not fill this. OK, hold on. Maybe it's just this one point is causing me a bit of an issue. Let's just bring it a little bit closer together. See what happens. Of course, for the purposes of this demonstration, it won't work. But I had it working earlier. <laughs> Large gaps, gaps found. Let's go with small gaps, medium gaps, custom gaps. Still no gaps found. Come on. Hey, OK, great. Sorry. So obviously, we just had to set the parameters to be higher. Uh, obviously it's looking at the the amount of pixels um, between the two gap points here uh, so sometimes if you find that you're having a bit of a problem um, fiddle around with these uh, measurements and uh, eventually it'll tell you how many gaps it finds and it'll be able to work on that so now we can hit OK with our live paint bucket tool still in play uh, we can fill this shape in and you can see that it is working its magic down in there. It's not the cleanest um, looking uh, looking solution, but it'll get the job done. And now uh, I want to show you guys the other menu that I was bringing up for a second. And with the live paint tool still in play, if we hit enter or return on your keyboard, it brings up the live paint bucket options. Um, usually, there's the occasional time where you might want to paint a stroke. I can walk you through that next. Uh, and then, you know, like anything in Illustrator, you can change all sorts of parameters. We can change the highlight color. Um, because we were just working with a lot of red, it might be difficult to 
see the highlight red. Uh, and you can actually tell it how thick you want that highlight to be. Um, and then there's the option to fill uh, with paint fills um, and have your cursor swatch preview, which is where you see these little um, swatch panel options in here. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out another ellipse. Uh, I'm going to just fill this guy with red. And then we're going to create a stroke. We're going to make this guy black. And I'm going to make it nice and thick. Maybe like nine. OK. And we're going to, of course, it didn't go black. It went white for some reason. OK, black. Cool. Black. And we're going to draw out our next shape, just like so, with our live paint bucket. Um, now we want to make sure we're looking at the stroke here. Uh, I'm going to make this the nice mm, purplish color. And you can see now that, let me just zoom in. Oh, come on. Why aren't we working? Hmm. Uh, this is always a bit of a trick. There's a reason why they don't suggest you paint the strokes. And this would be why. It gets very annoying very fast. Um, okay, so instead of black, let's come up here and use like a seafoam greenish looking color. There we go. And you're able to actually live paint strokes and still keep that stroke um, an editable sort of... Uh, value so you can go in and change the width of it if you'd like uh, and we can go back and change the fill of the interior if you want so it's still completely customizable so that's my quick walkthrough on how to use the live paint tool in the next demonstration i'm going to walk you guys through how to import an image into illustrator quickly use the image trace and uh, paint it using the live paint bucket for a really good fast um I guess, illustration color demo. Uh, so I'll catch you guys in the next video.